What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this video, we're going to continue the series for building a web application for PowerShell and PHP. So if you remember in our last video, we set up the layout for our web application. And in this video, we're going to write up the core PHP code to set up a form so we can pass the input of that form into PowerShell parameters. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to open up VS code again and back in our index.php file, I'm going to remove the comment and include our form.php, which we haven't created yet. So I'll go ahead and type in the command include form.php and end it with a semicolon. And then within Windows Explorer, I'm gonna head into the E drive web tool, a new hire, and then we're gonna create a form.php file. That way we can uh, set this up to use our form. So once that is created, we'll go ahead and open up that using VS code. And we're going to start off by opening up our PHP tags because the first thing we want to do is check to make sure that the user didn't go straight into the form.php page. So we just want to make some quick validation to make sure that they are going through the proper methods. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and write an if command, an if statement. And within that if statement, we'll use a PHP function called preg underscore match. And what this will do is validate that the URL does not contain the string form.php. So if there is a form.php within the URL, we'll automatically send the user back to the new hire page and go through the normal flow. The preg match function takes two arguments. The first one is the string that we want to check for. In our case, it's going to be form.php as it's written there. The second argument is going to be the dollar underscore server super global variable. And between the square brackets, we'll put in the request underscore URI, which is the current link in the browser. So once that is set, um, we'll want to use the header function to redirect the user to our new hire page. And to do that, we'll go ahead and type in header. And within the parentheses, we'll set the location to dot dot forward slash new hire forward slash um, and then we'll end it off with a semicolon. Next up, we're going to write the HTML code for setting up a form. Uh, we'll start off with two div tags so we can wrap the form within those tags. Uh, the first element is going to be named form wrapper, and the second element is going to be named form data. And underneath the form data div element, we'll set up a form action. Since we don't want to pass the input from the form to another PHP file, We'll go ahead and leave the double quotes empty, empty double quotes. However, our form method is going to be set to post because we don't want to have our form input visible within the URL after it's submitted. Underneath that, we'll add a first name with a colon. This is going to be the label above our input text, so we'll want to make sure that it looks pretty. Uh, below that, we'll add a break tag for some spacing. And then our input tag. Uh, our type is going to be a text input. And for the name, we'll set it to first name and we'll make sure that it's all lowercase. Uh, we'll also want to add a placeholder of the first name so it can give it a hint, so to speak. And finally, we'll mark it as required. And then once that is done, we'll go ahead and add another break to it to give it some extra spacing. And then we'll go ahead and copy this snippet and then paste it four more times because we're going to be reusing uh, this code. All right, and once that is pasted like so, we'll go ahead and use our second input and change the first name to last name. Um, once that is set, we'll go ahead and use our third input to set it to the employee ID. So we'll make sure we want to change that. Uh, next up, we'll replace the first name with the manager's email with manager email. And for the placeholder, we'll set something like manager's email address. And finally, for our last input, we'll change the first name to initiated by. Since this input is going to be populated automatically, we do not want to give the user the ability to change this on their end. So we'll set it to read only and then set it to a gray background. And this input also requires a value, but we'll go ahead and set that after we check what we've got so far. If I go ahead and add that now, then our page is going to break. All right, last but not least, we'll go ahead and add a button so the user can click the button to confirm their information. Right with our form now mostly complete, let's go back into the browser to see what we've got so far. So if you recall, we set up a validation check to see if the user goes straight to form.php. Um, if they did, it should automatically redirect them to the new hire page. 
Um, as you can see, that validation does work and it does take me back to the new hire page. All right, so now let's fill out the form and run a test submit. Uh, it's not gonna do anything yet because we haven't coded that part, but we're just checking to make sure that nothing breaks. Also take note of the initiated by field. Um, it is grayed out and I am not able to enter in any text, so that read only is working. All right, so now let's go back into our VS code and then we'll go ahead and put in the value. Um, we're gonna set the value to the initiated by variable within our PHP index file. So we'll make sure that we set that accordingly. All right, so let's save this form and head on over to our index.php file. Uh, we wanna make sure that we give our PowerShell scripts plenty of time to run. So we'll go ahead and add a set time limit function. Uh, the argument or value is in seconds, so this should give it plenty of time to run without timing out on us. So we'll go ahead and set that value to 500 seconds. And then below that, I'm going to create a variable that we can pass into our initiated by variable. Uh, for now, this variable is going to be hard-coded until we set up Azure SSO. Uh, once we implement single sign-on with this app, we'll be able to populate this field dynamically. Also, it's a must that we escape and sanitize our variables before we pass them on to our input fields. Uh, this is so users don't try to inject any malicious code into whatever fields that you are passing them into. Uh, to do this, we'll go ahead and use the function escape shell args along with the filter var function to escape and sanitize our input. So it should look uh, just like so. All right, now we want to validate and check to make sure that the submit button was pressed. If it was not, then we want to display the form that we created earlier so the user can enter in their data. Um, so we'll go ahead and set up an if statement to say if parentheses exclamation is set and then another set of parentheses and in those second parentheses we'll put in the post global variable along with the submit in the square brackets uh, this is basically telling php if the submit button was not pressed go ahead and display the form and we'll go ahead and cut the include form.php line and paste it in between that conditional block since that's where it belongs all right, and after that, we'll go ahead and write an else block along with some validations so we can make sure that our data is correct on input. So we'll start off by making sure that all input fields do have a value. Uh, if you recall, we set this up in our HTML form, but the problem is that it is very easy to bypass, so we need to make sure that this is added on the back end. Uh, luckily for us, PHP does have a function called empty, which can take our global post variables as an argument. So I'm going to create four empty functions and separate them by an or statement. Uh, this will tell PHP that if the first name, the last name, the employee ID, or the manager fields are empty, if any one of those are empty, let's go ahead and spit out an error. So for our specific case, that error is going to be error, not all fields were filled in. Okay, so if the code reaches this point in our script, it means that it's passed all of our validation checks. So we need to make sure that we sanitize and escape our arguments. Um, I'm going to start off with our first name variable and call the escape shell arg function. Inside of that, I'm going to call the filter var function and pass in the first name global post variable. The second argument is going to pass in the filter sanitize string, and this should be good to block uh, SQL injection attacks, hopefully. I'm going to copy and paste this three more times to account for our last name, our employee ID, and our manager email variables. I uh, will need to make sure that the values inside the square brackets match the input values in our PHP form, on our form.php form. Um, I'm also going to replace the filter sanitize string with filter sanitize email on the manager email variable. So it should look just like this when it's all said and done. Next up, I'm going to set up a try catch block to catch any errors from our PHP code. So we'll make sure that we set up that block. I'm also going to be defining a user account variable to hold the value from our PowerShell output and display that on the screen. So in order to call PowerShell from PHP, we'll need to use the shell exec function and basically use it as a command line. Anytime you're running shell exec, it's always important to implement code so you don't fall victim of injection attacks like the SQL injection. 
So this is why we escaped and sanitized our values because we'll be passing them here in this script as well. So to start off, we'll set user account equals shell exec. And inside the parentheses, we'll put double quotes and call powershell.exe dash execution policy. And then we'll set that execution policy to bypass. We'll also add the no profile parameter along with the command parameter. Since we haven't written our PowerShell scripts just yet, I'm going to use some test code to make sure that we get some kind of output when we run this. Inside the command parameter, we'll add a set of single quotes and put hello PowerShell. So if this runs successfully, we'll expect hello PowerShell as the output on our web page, and we'll check that in just a few. Since our output is currently going into the user account variable, uh, we'll need to make sure that we echo the user account variable to display it on the screen. We'll also add a set of pre tags so it has a pre formatted output. Okay, and under the catch block, we'll, we'll call the die function and just output error for now. I actually need to add an argument to our catch block, so I'll add throwable and specify the user account variable. All right, so our code is just about done here, so let's head on over to our browser and check to see what we're working with. I'm going to fill in some sample information and hit the submit button to see if we have any errors. Uh, we should be expecting hello PowerShell as the output if everything is running successfully. Also, one thing to mention is that our initiated by is now populated with our hard coded option. So that is great. Um, and after hitting the submit button, we do see our expected output. So that is working as expected as well. Um, now let's try and validate missing values in our form. I'm going to skip the first name and fill out the information again, and we should expect an HTML error. However, as I mentioned, it's very easy to bypass this. So by going into the developer tools and removing the required field, uh, let's do this and see if PHP validation catches it. So on the right pane here, we'll just need to double click and delete the text that says required and hit the submit button. Uh, if our code is correct, we should get the error saying that not all fields were filled in correctly. And there it is. Nice, nice. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. In our next video, we'll be setting up all of our PowerShell code and setting up everything in a module. So definitely stay tuned for that. Until next time, this is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.